Don't you feel a desire to learn any languages? Languages has always been something that I dislike learning. Why? Like, out of everything that we study, language is the one that I hate the most. I would rather study science, maths, at maths, calculus, anything. Except languages? Except language and history. So you hate English? No, English is easy and that's fine. Because it's your first language. Yeah. Okay. But any other new languages, I'm like, what's the goddamn point now? I mean, I understand, I know okay. it's important, but at the same time, it's also just kind of like, what do I... Why? It's so hard. Like... I can I can do a lot of things that are hard, you know, but learning new language is not one of them. I've always hated it. I think also because I'm quite traumatized but in a sense that um, basically because my family is all English speaking, nobody knows how to speak Mandarin uh -huh. and they sent me to Chinese school. And oh, they Chi did? Yeah. Oh. I went to Chinese school for like four years. Okay. So traumatizing. Like, because I, I struggled so hard to pick up the language. Because again, nobody at home could teach me. But then, like, I would get hit a lot by my teachers. I would get caned a lot. They would take the marker pen and pop my knuckles. Oh my god. They'd take the cane and whack me here, whack me there, make me do squats, this and that. Because I just couldn't pick it up as quickly. I can't do I can't do it with language. Do and because of that, I couldn't like maybe that's why la, I don't I don't want to pick up languages. Because I associate it with that memory. Dude, but SJKC sounds rough. It's rough as hell. But you've been to SJKC, yeah? I've been SK my whole life. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they really like... Wow. They're really... when Okay lah, if I compare SK and SJKC, but yeah, S, SK is a lot easier because... The teachers are strict, but they're not as strict. But Chinese teachers, right, they are... F they will fuck you up. They will fuck you up. Damn. Yeah, and then I remember when I was like a kid going to SJKC. You imagine uh, a small kid, uh, stand at one to stand at four. Uh. I found it so hard to pick up the language and because I was so scared, I would stay up until 1am as a child to try and get my, uh, my next morning Chinese quiz correct. But then Damn. because I get so scared, I immediately forget everything in the morning. The minute that the quiz starts. Oh my god, yeah. No, I, I get that. So, yeah, that's why I don't like anything to do with language because it was never easy for me. I took Chinese class when I was in SK before mm. and then it was a teacher from Chinese school. I don't know why they all have the same shit where they do the ruler knuckle thing. It just looks like it's across the board. Everywhere they just use that as a punishment. Yeah, yeah. no, language is rough. Language. No, yeah. no language for but me. But Duolingo is fun. <laughs> with what? The teacher, the Lin? Yeah, my favorite lesbian teacher. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Oatmilk Lesbian. Hi. What are we talking about today? So, is this a red flags part two? It's not red flags. It's more like common like things that lesbians do in dating that is like really a fucking red flag that we all need to stop. Yeah. So it's actually. So we'll be diving a little deeper as to why these are common sapphic red flags. Mm. And actually this was a request that we got on TikTok previously. Mic test. Okay. Mic test. Okay. It was a it was a request we got on TikTok previously by yeah. um, someone who sent it to us to discuss about like very deeply common and deeply rooted women loving women red flags in relationships. Yeah. Yeah. I used to take pride, like when I go to my straight friends, you know how like um, the whole thing about lesbians um, getting serious really quickly? I used to take pride in it, you know, I'll be in front of my straight friends like, ah, six months are still not to together. Ah. <laughs> I, 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 I took pride in it, but now that I'm looking back, it's not something to be proud of. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, I feel like, um, okay, we can talk about that, the first one, getting too serious too soon. So... Lesbians rush into relationships. One one in in a relationship already. That's amazing. It's too fast. It's yeah, they always fucking rush into like relationships. And the thing is like I don't know, like if you've been in a sapphic relationship, you know that it's intense. So like I think like okay, compared to last time when I was dating men, right? Mm. I don't know if this applies to women who date men as well, but when I dated men last time, ninety nine percent of the time, the conversations, right? There's a good night one. Like, bye. There's an end to a conversation. You don't really, like, continue it. You, like, you can talk for a while and not talk for a few days and then talk again. That kind mm. of thing. But 
with sapphic relationships, you like, the minute you start talking, you talk every day. I don't know what is it about like sapphics, we fucking just like get into the yeah. just the meat of things very soon. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand it also because, okay, from what I noticed back, I think around two, two, two years ago when I was still on the apps, I, I realised that I developed this kind of fear that the other person will leave me or no longer find me interesting if I don't talk to them every day. Mm-mm-mm. I think maybe that's why also, you know? Yeah. I realised that like, yeah, you can have interesting conversations with people from time to time and it can be spread out. But the minute I stop and I, I want to focus on doing like whatever it is that I'm doing, I'm just, I just get scared. And I don't know if this is the way with everyone, but I, I guess it's one of the reasons as well, lah, you know? Because you, re- you really kind of know like what is the pattern that lesbians are like when they, when they talk online. Mm-hmm. So for me, knowing that pattern, my fear is that like, oh shit, like I'm not being that like typical lesbian and then they're just going to be like, what the fuck? And then like, oh, why this person never reply my message? Oh, this person's boring, you know? I, I would have that fear, lah. Yeah, I get what you mean. I think for me also, like, um, this is this was really weird, but I think it is probably because I'm a lesbian. But like back then when I was talking to men, right? Mm. Like, yeah, the whole thing, you don't even talk every day when mm. it's like, okay, but I know that in a relationship, you technically talk every day, but I'm just saying in, in general, casual dating, mm. you don't talk every day. Yeah. And you don't really have like intense conversations. Like it's not intense. But with lesbians, the minute I started, like, okay, the minute I finally admitted I was a lesbian, and then I exclusively dated women, I noticed myself just, like, talking almost every day to, like, all of them. And it gets serious, like, so fast. Yes. What is your trauma? What is your parents? This, what is that? What abuse have you suffered? All that shit, you know, it's so fast. It's like, and then the worst part is, like, even though I felt like it was fast, I was scared if they didn't talk to me again. I would yeah. feel insecure as well. I'll be like, do they not like me? Why didn't they talk to me today? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it's dumb. It's actually so dumb. Like, I, why do we let that? But I get it. I get why we would feel that way at the time. But I think also because back then, I think we were a lot younger and we were still studying. So we kind of like didn't understand as yeah. well. Maybe, maybe older lesbians are different. I wouldn't know. But... I don't know, you can say yeah, more no, of they're that. not different. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> I can't say anything also because the only older lesbian that I kind of like talked to, I also did not want to talk every day and then it didn't happen lah. And that's fine also. Yeah. I think because we were also younger. Yeah, I you think know? it was something that happened when you're younger. Like yeah. for me, I noticed this happened a lot when I was in the pandemic era also. Uh, yeah, pandemic, that one. Uh, I think it fucked up our brain chemistry a little bit. No, it pandemic. definitely fucked us up. Like, yeah. Socially as well, it yeah. fucked us up socially. Everybody is like, was chronically online for a reason. Chronically online for real. Yeah. And the worst part is like, when you talk, the thing about like, lesbians like, too much, too soon, too fast, you writing essays to each other. Like you write essays about your stories, your life, and then you talk until like, so late, it's like, it's crazy lah. It's crazy. Actually, looking at looking back, like all these kind of behaviors is crazy. Why are we doing this? I mean, like this kind of conversation. But I mean, okay, while you're texting, right? It's sort of like a convenient method for you to gain connection and build a relationship. It's convenient, but at the same time, for me at least, right? I feel like when you are texting, you cannot really you can erase and you can write again. You can erase and you can write again. You That's can true. it's easier to curate what you are going to say to that person. Yeah. And it's easier to put up a front. And it's just to me it's too easy for both parties. It's too easy, too easy of a way to build a connection. You're not actually putting in the effort to going out, seeing each other, looking at looking them in the face and talking to them and actually, you know, hearing their tone of voice, looking at the way that they talk the way, I mean, their posture and everything, you know, just understanding more about that person. There's only so much you can learn through a text. Yeah, that's so true, actually. Yeah, but this, like, thing where lesbians just rush into relationships is, like, I mean, for me, I feel like definitely a reason is the whole, like, scarcity mindset thing. Mm, yeah, 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 for sure. It's a subconscious thing that every lesbian sapphic goes through, like, just a scarcity mindset that, oh, I may not find someone hotter, may not find someone I like even more, I yeah. may not find someone who I'm this attracted to. Yeah. Like, you already create a fantasy about the relationship and the person yes. before even yes. getting into the relationship. Yes. Yeah. That is so true though. That is true. Because why else would a- any sane person rush into a relationship? Correct. Okay, but what is a good timeline for you? What's a good timeline? Like how many months? 
I will honestly say six months now. Before that, it was what for you? Before that, okay, the the longest it took me was three months. Three months. Three months. And even so, I felt rushed, to be honest. Remember I mentioned, I don't know how many times I mentioned on this podcast and to you, right? I felt rushed into a relationship. I wanted to take my time with that because, again, I wasn't ready, which I technically should not have been dating if I wasn't ready. Um, but I did want more time to get to know the person more because, I don't know, I, I had serious trust issues back then also. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did want to take my time, but I wasn't given the liberty to take my own time. So now I would say... Now like ideally it's like six months first. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time it's quite confusing nowadays because if you look at it, right, there's this whole thing where there's the term called situationship and everything, or suddenly exclusively dating, casually dating and all of that. For me, I want to keep it simple. If I see someone, I see one person. Mm-mm. So for me it's like I will exclusively date that person and there's no such thing as situationship for me. And then if I want to get into a relationship, I'll get into a relationship with that person after that six months. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, six yeah. months what about you uh, it's always I notice I always get into a relationship after five months so mm. five months seems to be the timeline for me considering my past history five months is always the make or break mm. yeah I don't know why it's always been oh five 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 like you know mm. but then I think ideally it's six months or so lah, because I think like that's long enough time to see how a person is like yeah like I feel like one thing you cannot rush is time Mm. Time, unfortunately, you need it. Mm. Like you can be s- as smart as you want about anything, you can be like as efficient about how you want to read a person. But mm. at the end of the day, still like time is the only way yeah. to prove itself, lah. Yeah. So. And I feel like uh, six months in, that's when you stop. But that's when the honeymoon phase kind of dies down. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when you start like kind of like really seeing that person for them. And I remember I said the nine month in or the ten month in, you start to. That it either goes down or what So I feel like it's quite uh, I feel like it's a decent timeline lah, Six months And I feel like a lot of lesbians When they hear that They're gonna be like Oh that sounds like 10 years You know Yeah. But at the same time Which also Which is why it's gonna make it Very hard for us to date also right Because Six months everybody's gonna be like Oh this person is like Doesn't want me This and that This and that And then To be very honest with you I don't know about you But for me I will also still feel anxious That if I make the person Wait too long Are they gonna leave me yeah, I yeah. would still feel anxious about that So I, I just feel like for us It's going to be a bit hard la, to date la, Because of this I feel the same too actually Like I feel like okay If I make this person wait too long They probably like feel some type of way about me But also at the same time like If we're still obsessed with each other After 6 months That's a good sign You know like If after 6 months you're done Then it's like Okay like the trash took itself out Kind of situation That's true Yeah but I, I do get it because I know mm. that in Sapphic culture, it tends to be in one month. Yeah, it's very fast. One it's month or a fast. few weeks, then suddenly in a relationship already. Heart launching, not even soft launching, heart ass launching. Yo. What's your fastest? The fastest I've launched someone? No, the fastest you've made it official. Five months. Oh shit, that's I, yeah, really I, long. I never made it official within like one, two months or. Damn. You can only like tell so much like, from one month. And also because like, like I don't want failed relationships, the fuck? I'm not yeah, trying to set yeah. myself up for failure. So I'm not gonna be like one month in in a relationship really. Do you feel like because like you kind of also started out uh, with dating guys? Maybe. I think maybe that's a, a yeah. reason that contributed. Because from what I realized, right, when you're a baby gay, uh-huh. at least for me, because I, I didn't like really, really seriously date anyone um, before my first like sapphic relationship, right? Uh-huh. So as a baby gay, I would get like really like eh, about the about the relationship and then one month in. And because lesbians are like that, you know, you just want to lock it down quickly, I guess. Yeah. I think it's uh, like if you, maybe if you start dating women first, only women, then it may, may have been different. Maybe mm. But the thing is like When I dated men I did rush into it though But it was because I wanted a boyfriend Oh I wanted to show How, how the rush is rush? One month Oh shit Yeah with men Damn that's quick Yeah it's quick right I didn't even fucking know them But I was like Yeah I needed mm. a boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> Hey world I got a boyfriend Oh but my yeah, god So that was the vibe Actually with the men It was all very rushed Like looking back but the thing is, men just easily make anyone their girlfriend. Like, come on, let's be real. Mm. And then you're like, at the time when you have nobody, like, okay lah. 
<laughs> I'll be your girlfriend. Sure. <laughs> I'm just young and dumb, but I I think I honestly think that yeah, if I started out with just sapphic relationship, I would also rush into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's like a f- the time when you first start dating people, you you rush into things. Maybe also. I think yeah. it's the first few. Then you kind of like learn like oh, this is the honeymoon stage. Oh, this is the butterfly hee hee ha ha feeling that you shouldn't like. You shouldn't let it control you. Yeah. And I feel like one thing lesbians have a lack of is self control. Real. Because we are so easily controlled by all these emotions, like a yeah. lot of things that we do are controlled by emotions. If you if you if you think about it, right? For example, yeah, the true. getting into a relationship thing, the love bombing thing, yeah. the whole spiting your ex, the whole let- getting back together with your ex, letting your ex back into your life, you know, approaching your ex, letting your ex linger around. A lot of things that we do is very like controlled by emotions. We have a lack of self control when it comes to emotions, and we do not have a good relationship with our emotions, yeah. mainly because of our childhood. Actually, it's so true. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, I don't know. With the you know, like, um, with suffix, right? Like, when I start, I think I also know why I took my time with women, cause I already dated three men, like actual relationships, mm. and they all failed. <laughs> like so, like in comparison at the time, like, I think the magnitude of like shit. I already have so many failed relationships. Like, I need to be for real. Mm. I can't be like. Around all the time, I yeah. can't get into relationships and break up all the fucking time. Yeah, like before a year, mm. like even with the men, it didn't even last more than a year. Mm. And I can't even say shit about women because none of them also lasted over a year. So it's mm. like, you know what I mean? It's mm. like I don't want to keep setting myself up for failure. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. Okay, the second thing is also related to this uh, too much too soon thing: love bombing. <laughs> I love this. Ooh. I have done it. Not proud to say, but. <laughs> But like it's it's very common, <coughs> and sometimes you don't even realize you do it, because you want the person to like you. Yes. A lot of these issues are uh, stem from low self esteem. Yeah. 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 That's that's very true. Yeah. So it's like lesbians tend to love bomb each other out of low self esteem, out of mm. scarcity mindset. Mm. Yeah. Like love bombing. Um, Okay, what happened to me when I love bomb? Okay, I remember like all my relationships, there was some form of love bombing going on, like relationships and like situationships. If I'm not the love bomber, they are the love bomber. Mm. So, the mating ritual is love bombing. So somebody got a love bomb in order to attract or make the other person stay, and that's actually really bad. Yeah, yeah. One thing people have love bombed me with a lot is gifts. So the fuckers who got me all love bomb me with gifts, and then I'll be like, "Oh, they love me because they bought stuff for me." Like the shallow bitch I am. <laughs> so it's like, then afterwards when you look back, you're like, "Wow, they definitely did it like to love bomb me." And how I love bomb other people: acts of service, I cook for them, become their wife, all this kind of shit. Giving them fucking the wife treatment Giving when they didn't wife deserve treatment. that. But it was my fault too. Uh. Yeah. So they didn't deserve it, but like I shouldn't even have done it. So like yeah, and that's what sapphics like to do. They love bomb in like you know acts of service, you know uh, gifts, you know you you make each other feel like you're in a relationship, but actually you're not. It's it's a very unusual feeling actually. Looking back, doing all these things for somebody who, like in the beginning, is not yours. Yeah. And you're not theirs. Yeah. In a way, yeah. Yeah, you're doing that to like kind of convince them that like you know like yeah. you should be in a relationship with me. This is what you get if you be in a relationship with me. But in reality, that's not the case. Exactly. Yeah, and oh my god, I don't I don't exactly remember love bombing anyone. I don't think I have. You what? don't seem the love bombing type. What do you mean? I don't seem like a love bombing type. You you don't seem like you will love bomb people. What does that even mean? How do you seem like you're gonna love bomb people? Like. I I mean like <coughs> as in like how I know you as a person lah. I don't think you love bomb people. You know me as a friend can be different from partner one, ma'am. As in like I hear your stories. Oh, it doesn't sound like you should <coughs> be the love bombing type. Yeah, but I do, genu- genuinely lah. I don't feel like I remember myself love bombing anyone. When I psychologically look back at myself as well, uh-huh. I don't really feel like I love bomb anyone. I hope I didn't, but I know at least in my past relationship I didn't. I got love bombed. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> this person likes me so much. <laughs> Real. How I got love bombed was that person. Oh my god, second date. Okay, I didn't even know that 
during our second date was Valentine's. I didn't realize it. I was like, okay, let's go on this date because I'm busy here. I'm busy here. I'm busy here. I'm busy here. Okay, I'm free on this date. Let's go this date. Uh. Turns out it was Valentine's. I didn't even realize. Then a the person showed up at my doorstep with a gift. And it was only the second date. And then I was just kind of like, oh, that's sweet. But then when I look back, I'm just kind of like, you don't know anything about me. You got me a gift. That is really sweet. But at the same time, it's kind of like, it's a bit too fast, I feel, you know? Because for me, when I buy gifts for someone, it's like, I kind of know you. I'm like, oh, this made me think of you. Or I think you would like this, you know, rather than... Because what this person did was that this person bought me something that they liked. Mm -hmm. You know, their version of a generic gift. Which I feel like it's kind of nice. I get to know about you and, and like you as a person. But at the same time, it's kind of like it feels more like they are doing it to make themselves feel good. Mm -mm -mm. You know? I got love bombed with that and also that person spent like crazy on dates. Damn. Spent like crazy on dates. Like seriously. Then in my head, I was kind of like, where's all this fucking money coming from? La? But then I was like, okay, he, haha. I didn't know I was getting love bombed. I was like, whatever. I like this food anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. I didn't realize it. I just thought that that person was like very caring and actually like, you know, gave a shit. And I guess they did give a shit back then because they were trying to win me over. <clears throat> but then slowly, slowly after, after we got into a relationship and everything, um, all of that treatment stopped. All of that treatment just, just stopped. And I, looking back in, well, while I was in the relationship, I was looking back, I was also like, oh, I realized that, you know, we don't do this together anymore or you don't do this anymore and this and that. Then I was like, I think you love bomb me. Then they were like, did I love bomb you? And then we went to a couples therapy, couples therapy session and I was like, you love bombed me. And then my partner during then was like, I didn't love bomb you. And the therapist was just sitting there like this. <laughs> I know for a fact that I got love bomb and I am confirmed sure that the therapist agreed with me. Because if you do it at the start and it's not a consistent behavior and not a consistent action, and it starts to die down after that, that is considered love bombing already because you're doing it to win that person over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, I feel like it's quite easy now to um, like identify this pattern for me is because I feel like no matter how good the love bombing feels when it's done towards me, but when you look at it realistically, if you were the person, do you think that it is logical or not that you are not pacing yourself? Yeah. As much as it feels good to be love bombed, it should be equal that the other person should also pace himself because they shouldn't be giving too much of themselves to someone they don't know, even if it's you. They shouldn't be doing too much for a person that they don't know. So that's how you know it's love bombing yeah, for me. Yeah. yeah. I get what you mean also. I think love bombing, right? Like, it's good to put yourself, how to identify if it's love bomb or if it's genuine. It's just to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Yeah. Let's say you roughly know what are the values and the price of this and then you think about how much they're doing it. Mm. Is it realistic? Like, is it... Is what they're doing actually a sign... Financially sustainable. Financially sustainable, yeah. And then also, like... Is what they're doing, like... Does it reek of winning you over? Mm. Or does it just show that, oh, they just want to do something nice for you? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. it's very different, yeah. It's like... Someone trying to win you over is very obvious. Like, mm. now, after you... When you recognize the patterns... Yeah. This whole, like, love bombing thing... Mm. Then you're like, okay, yeah, definitely that was a uh, trying to win over thing. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because someone is like, I think at the end of the day, it's just all energy. La. Mm. You just need to be able to sense energy from people. Mm. You know what is one thing that I feel like has, has also contributed to this whole love bombing culture? Is um, you watch in movies, right? It's always like when someone is trying to court the woman. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they tend to do all these like grand gestures and they do this and do that. And then the ending of the movie is always they eventually get together. So that is considered the ending of the movie. That is the destination. Yeah. So for me, right, I feel like the whole love bombing, the thing that contributed to it was all these movies that you watch. Yeah, like, yeah. it just paints this really unrealistic picture of how somebody should be courting another person when in reality, it should be two parties getting to know each other. And then, together, you guys decide whether you guys are compatible or not. Lah. It's not like one person caught the other person, you know. I feel like it should be equal contribution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the both of you just do things together, just talk to each other, just go out together. You buy each, other's, buy each other gifts, not too grand, you know. Because for what fuck, you don't even know the person. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's exactly. just very... 
I think we are all conditioned to love bomb, honestly. Yeah. And because lesbians, we have a lot of harder time dating when we were young. So love bombing is the solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we think that the only way that we can beat men yeah. is if our gestures are even grander than them. I feel that on a fucking personal level. Yeah. So that is why we need to stop comparing ourselves to the hetero space and being like, yeah, I gotta be better than that man. Like I can treat a woman better than a man can treat a woman. Yeah. You know, and we gotta stop like thinking like we're in the fucking movies because we're not in the movies, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is real life. Stop love bombing. Yeah, stop love bombing. I feel that though. Like I feel like, you know, back then when I felt like I was in competition with men, and you know how you can bleep her name out? Mm. And then she was like, she felt like she <coughs> was in competition with them. Mm. So she wanted to see who could do better. Yeah. I feel like that's such a lesbian thing also. Yeah. You know, you just like in competition with men. So you end up fucking love bombing la, doing all these grand gestures la. Like going over the moon. Yeah. Over the top with things. Yeah, yeah. Because you just feel like you just you just feel like overcompensating period yes correct that's the fucking issue you know and a lot of the love bombing really as you said like it's it's very it stems from something very very internal and it's a community problem because it's like yeah. first of all the whole thing where it's already hard to date <coughs> and mm. we don't feel like what we bring to the table ourselves as people is enough Mm. And actually that's why people love bomb Because they yeah. don't feel like What they bring to the table is enough Correct, correct. And I can say that Because that was what happened to me When I love bomb also mm. I don't feel like The person I am as a whole Was enough to be brought to the table mm, 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 I don't mm. feel like They would like me Just for who I am mm. And I felt like I had to go the extra mile Just to do all these things That was yeah. my psychology Behind love correct. bombing And I'm pretty sure like People also felt similarly When they love bomb themselves mm, mm, mm. Yeah because you do it Out of a place of scarcity Yes correct you know, when you were when you're mentioning the whole thing, you know, what, what was going through my head is that like, <clears throat> remember one of the previous episodes, you were, you were asking me why I don't like date people I find attractive? Mm-hmm. It's because I don't want to be a love bomber. Wow. Because, <laughs> to, to be very honest with you, and I am not afraid to admit this, is because when, if, if I am the one who makes the move a lot of times, I will feel the need to compensate in that manner. Okay. To be very honest. And I just think it's really deeply ingrained in my head. Again, like I said, because of the movies that we watch and everything and how, what everyone is doing. Like, I feel pressured to do that as well because I feel like if I'm not doing it the way everyone is doing it, then it's not enough. You know, like, it's, I guess it also has got to stem from, like, some form of insecurity within me, I guess, that, like, oh, if, let's say, this person is receiving that kind of treatment from other people and doesn't receive it from me, then how? You know? And because, the reason why I think like that also, because when I got into my previous relationship, the question that my friends asked me was that, who's treating you better? This person who, uh... whom we didn't know was love for me, or the other person who was taking it slow? Then I said lah, the person who fucking love bombed me is treating me better but we didn't know, I didn't know it was love bombing. You see, yeah. that's how a lot of people are perceiving value nowadays is by the gifts that you get, by, by people showering you with, I don't know, whatever food that you like, you know, like a lot of people is basing this off of compatibility, like using this to determine compatibility and value and who is treating you better. So I made the wrong decision myself because I thought that the person who was love bombing me held more value than the person who was taking it slow. Damn, guys. And the whole fucking community needs to hear this. But actually, it's so true, yeah. Yeah. I ended up choosing the wrong person because I, I, I did... I, yeah, I value somebody who loved bomb me and that's why I'm also scared to yeah. date people whom I'm attracted to. But the to people that I am attracted to as well... Okay, I always just date people I'm attracted to. I cannot date someone I'm not attracted to. They love bomb the living shit out of me as well. So it's, it, it really goes both ways. Like, I really think if you date a more attractive person that you think is like, oh, more attractive than the other person in relative, they are also going to love bomb you. It but, will happen. I mean, it will happen. But the thing is that for me, it didn't happen. The person I was actually more attracted to did not love bomb me. Maybe she just didn't... Maybe she's just one, of, one in a million lah. Who doesn't love bomb? But I'm sure all this motherfucker who is the one in a million with everything, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Maybe she's the only one who doesn't love bomb, but I'm pretty sure a lot of people like they love bomb. Okay, unrelated, you can bleep this out. Yeah, so it just seems like 
It just seems like the competition is between who is going to drain their bank account the most for you. Yeah, yeah. And whose bank account is bigger that they can drain more from. And that that is like, I feel like that is the competition nowadays lah because that's what love bombing needs. In You need to be in a state of like whatever financial state you are in order to love bomb. I just feel like if you are dating as a lesbian, you gotta be rich. Yeah, you have girl. to be rich to Let's date as a lesbian. Here, uh, spending five figures on women. The fuck yeah, now? so I think that we really have to undo all of this because it's not fair for the baristas. No, <laughs> no, lah, for real, lah. Like y'all should stop. It's not a competition yeah. as to who has a bigger bank account, and I also need to unlearn a lot of things mm-hmm. from telling these stories. I also need to unlearn a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What's the next trope? Ghosting. Ghosting. I am also guilty of it. I am also guilty of ghosting. It's terrible. I've been ghosted and I'm I'm the I have been the ghoster and the ghosty. <laughs> oh my god. I have gotten uh ghosted and I have uh, been ghosted as well. I think I don't know man. I just feel like ghosting is just you just don't have you, you're just not good at communicating how you feel. And you're just taking the other person's feelings for granted. You're not you're not giving a shit about the other person when you ghost. Yeah, exactly. So like the reason for me at the time when I was like ghosting people, uh ghosting people, why do I ghost people? Because okay, the first thing, a lot of times this happened, dating app fatigue. That's mm. why I ghost people. It's not even if I'm like really into them or anything, I just ghost them because like sometimes you just like feel so fucking tired from the apps. Mm. Like you really like drain but that's a you problem it's like why 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 do you even put yourself in a situation where you're like fucking fatigued on the apps Mm. so that was one and the other reason is because i sometimes get an ick and i'm like ew (laughs) like that is that that is not right a lot of times like this x is usually like okay i would say the main x that i get if if we politically do not align that's the ick that I regularly get. I'm like, mm. I'm sorry, but I cannot. So that's one. And then the the other things that I ghost ghosting. This ghosting just applies to dating apps or what? I think also in real life. In real life. Like when you're off the apps on your on WhatsApp already. Oh okay yeah. Sometimes when um okay let's say people who have talked to me online like we're chatting and everything. Sometimes like I okay I try to I try to make it obvious that I every time when I like let's say if I'm not ready to be with anyone I try to make it as obvious as possible but sometimes it people don't just people just don't seem to get the hint and unfortunately I resort to ghosting um, and the thing is like it's not good ghosting is not a good thing I I don't I'm not like excusing my behavior or anything but the logic behind why I do it is because like. I feel like there's no other way for me to explain it and I I have a feeling that the person might brush it off and I don't want it to be a situation where they're like oh like oh what do you think this was I just wanted to hang out I just wanted to be friends and all that Mm. and because it it has like happened before Mm. where they're like I just want to make more friends just want to make more friends but I'm I'm just getting like weird vibes from it Mm. so that's why I ghost because Mm. I just feel like it's a lot easier Mm. but actually what I feel like is missing is actually communication. Like, I should definitely have communicated. But at the same time also, I feel like the reason for me not communicating is because I hate being gaslighted. Mm. So TLDR, do not gaslight and communicate and do not ghost. So that is the lesson. Yeah, I think... Okay, shit. What about you? For me, I ghosted... Okay, well... I ghosted the Nico Neko girl. Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah. I ghosted the Nico Neko girl. But deserved. Girl. And then there's, <laughs> there's, this other, there's this other girl that I ghost. Uh, no, that I didn't ghost. She ghosted me. So what happened was that... Okay, the thing is that I was a little bit confused because we would talk a lot on WhatsApp. Ugh. We talk a lot on WhatsApp, right? And there would be a lot of like flirting going on. Then, because she was still studying and then she was like, okay, I got to disappear for exams. Disappear for exams and then like after exams over then I was like oh okay like cool I just start texting again now I was like do you want to go out? Motherfucker ghosted me and I found out she got a boyfriend. <laughs> deserved. I, I mean oh she deserved to be ghosted but I know she ghosted you. Yeah. 
So I'm just like, I mean, it's fine if you are like, you, you found a boyfriend, it's completely okay, but you could have communicated to me that like, hey, I, I, I got a boyfriend, la. I'm not interested, la. I'm seeing someone now, la. I'm officially with this guy. La. Like, for me, it's just kind of like, it didn't make any sense for you to just, like, she, by the way, she did still reply to my text, but very cold, like, not cold, la. it's like, she replied a little bit, and then leave the chat for like two days and then reply again. Because it's like, it's kind of like, so so what are you trying to do? You know, like if you got a boyfriend, you can just tell me you got a boyfriend. You don't need to just like reply. And it made me think that like, maybe something is going on, but something is not going on, you know? That's what I, I didn't like, mm -hmm. you know? I just feel like it's a, a, a lack of communication lah. Mm -hmm. And then the one where I did ghost was because I was so sick of this person. I was like, basically this person was really rude to me and... um. In a, in a way that I feel like I didn't deserve. Mm -hmm. was, she was very rude to me and she, she had very entitled behaviour and very princessy behaviour. So I just got sick of that shit and I just like fucked off. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm going to excuse myself. Deserved. It's justified. <laughs> but in general, ghosting is not good lah. The thing is like, ghosting is a very grey area thing to me because like, when I've been ghosted, like, I think about, okay, the reasons why I ghost people. Because I feel like I have good reasons for ghosting people. And I think sometimes, like, what if people have good reasons for ghosting me? Mm. You know, like, let's say if I knew their reasons, maybe I wouldn't feel too bad about it. Because, like, yeah, sometimes, you know, there are things like political ics that I'm just like... You know, I, I can't just tell, like, hey, by the way, I don't think we should talk anymore because, like, we don't align politically. Actually, you know what? Saying it out loud, that sounds really healthy. <laughs> maybe I should have done that. <laughs> but, like... Like, yeah, that's the thing, like, um, I don't know, sometimes I just think, like, maybe, like, they also had their reasons, and mm. who am I to say, like, oh, yeah, they shouldn't have done that to me or whatever. Well, here's, here's the thing, la. you know, it, it's very hard to tell, I understand, but what I realise from a lot of people who ghost is that they ghost for ego's sake, because a lot of people, a lot of lesbians, what I realise is that they treat it like a bragging, right? They're like, oh, I ghosted her. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, true. A that's lot of people true. like to treat it as a bragging right, you know, like and yeah. and that's the thing, lah. That's why that's why it's very hard to tell, you know, whether the person goes to you genuinely for for a very good reason, for a very valid reason, or if they were just treating it as a game for validation and bragging rights, you know. That's what I realize. Now when you say it, mm. fuck all y'all who do that. Yeah, I, I, I do hear a lot of people who say, oh, I ghosted her, ha ha, I ghosted her, ha ha. It's just like okay, you ghosted someone and it doesn't seem like you're providing any proper explanation as to why you ghosted them other than you got bored or because you want to brag that you, you could ghost someone. You yeah, know, yeah. that you had the upper hand. Because when you ghost someone, like when they treat it as a bragging right, right? It, they really make it sound like they had the upper hand that they're the one who wanted me. Yeah, That's why yeah. I ghosted them. You know, and it's kind of icky when people do that. It's like, if you're not interested in them, don't talk to them lah. If you you, you you don't want to talk to them anymore, just communicate. You don't want to talk to them anymore lah. Why? Oh, I ghosted. You know? And that, that's the thing, you know, with the whole dating culture is that everybody's just talking to everyone because they're bored. They're treating everybody like really like just like yeah. that. Very disposable. They're treating everybody like super disposable. Like, oh, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm bored of you. I'm bored myself, so I go talk to you. I'm bored of you, so I go talk to someone else. I'm bored of you, so I go talk to someone else. It's just, it's very disgusting behavior how we are seeing each other, how we are viewing everyone as just like that. Just just a little toy to play with. It's really disrespectful, honestly. I just feel like everybody's very disrespectful to each other on the apps. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, honestly, like this whole disposability thing, that's the thing. I just feel like a lot of people do what they do for disposability's sake. Mm. And it's very fucking annoying. Which is why, like, stay celibate. Mm. There's really, like, no point because, like, the whole dating culture, like, it... You know, like, this whole... All these themes, right? Love bombing, ghosting, mm. too much, too soon, rushing mm. into things, all right. It all stems from low, low self-esteem. Mm. Everything, every lesbian red flag in relationships, all these deeply rooted ones is one main single source which is low self-esteem yeah like the reason why you get into you know you love bomb you want to get someone and it's because you think you don't have anything to bring to the table and then mm. you get into a relationship too fast because you come from a place of scarcity mindset i'm not going to find someone better i'm not going to this i'm not going to that you know this is the one you know 
and you get into it super fast because you build an idea in your head that this is what is best for yourself. Mm. And then this whole ghosting <coughs> thing, you know, just like everyone's disposable and all that. And uh, I want to have bragging rights to tell everybody that I ghosted this and that. And I'm just swiping and not giving a fuck about people left and right. Low self-esteem because you need people around you to validate, you know, your standing yeah. in society. That kind yeah. of shit. Yeah. All this shit is the one single source of problem, which is low self-esteem. And understandable why a lot of us grew up in very traumatic childhood. Mm. You grow up in your childhood, you were the weird kid, you were the one nobody likes, you are the one that gets bullied. Now, when you're older, suddenly you're cool. Mm -hmm. Because gays have good fashion. <laughs> and gays are cool. Honestly, gay people are cool now. Like, you know... Yeah. It's very fucked up to be homophobic now. <laughs> so I mean I mean not I mean just saying like in general, it's not fucked up to be homo homophobic. A lot of people are still homophobic, that's the reality. But the thing is is like I feel like gay people nowadays they are like okay, a lot of them are chronically online. Gay people are very creative. Gay people like are creators, they are like the backbones of social media and everything. So that's why like I feel like now when you have a lot more validation in your older self you feed off that. Mm. But you don't actually like question inside like, is my inner child actually healing from doing all this? Yeah. 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 It's just... You know, there's, there's one thing about dating apps also lah, because I think dating apps has made it... No, there's nothing wrong with dating apps, by the way. I, I think a dating app is just a tool, but, you know, us as humans, we do not have, like, self-control or discipline, whereby we use these dating apps to soothe ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like a means of soothing all these insecurities and all of that without actually doing the actual work to properly like look inside and like understand yourself and all of that. There's nothing wrong with dating apps. It's just everybody's just using it in, in the wrong way and not understanding how it's affecting them and also affecting other people on the apps as well because the, the person on the other side of the screen is also a person, you know. It's also a human being who also has insecurities, you know. Mm -hmm. And for all, you know, everything that you're doing that is stemming from your insecurities is contributing more to their insecurities as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like a cycle where everybody just makes it shittier for themselves and that's kind of like why like I also don't really want to be on the apps anymore is because I understand that I, I do have insecurities as well. I really do have insecurities and I just feel like mm -hmm. going into it and seeing the way that everybody treats everybody is going to make it worse for myself and I'm also not like fully at a place where I am able to you know, like cancel out all the noise, all the noise outside. Where, but like, oh, I, I have to, I, I cannot love bomb this person. I cannot ghost this person, and da, 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 because I'm afraid that they are gonna, you know, find someone else. You know, I, I, I cannot really cancel out the noise for the time being. That's why I also don't really want to be on the apps because it's gonna affect me. It's gonna affect the other person, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody I, on the apps just gotta <laughs> get it together. I, I totally get that. I feel like just being on the apps makes me very like drained. Because really the apps kind of energy is like, also do you feel like there's this whole thing where like lesbians like to keep their matches like cards, like Pokemon cards. Oh yeah. The, it's yeah, a yeah, very, yeah. very common thing and yeah. I hate it. Yeah. That's why I used to be okay with it. Because mm. back then, like when you're young, you're like, okay, that's what everyone talks about, you know, like, oh, my matches, you know, my matches here, my matches there. You know, my match, uh, I match with this, I match with that. And now uh, we used to talk, uh, but I ghosted her, like, you know, this kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But you still keep the match and all that stuff. This energy is very weird. When I'm now fucking 25 and I think about it, that energy is so weird. Yeah. I do not ever want to get back into it. And to be really honest, I don't think it's changed. I think a lot of suffix still behave this way. Mm. My matches are like my Pokemon cards. People I've talked to are like Pokemon cards. Yeah. If you ever talk to me, do not ever say it. I don't want. I'm embarrassed to be associated with you. Mm. But like, that's what... Yeah, like, at the end of the day, like, you're just a card in yeah. what everyone... Like, oh, this is my collection of all the people that I've talked to. My collection of bitches. Yeah, it's always the my bitches thing lah. And yeah, so... I hate it. I really hate it. And that's why I cannot, like... Regardless of my emotional availability, right? I just feel like the apps culture is just something I cannot get myself back into anymore. Because of this whole thing. I think that's why Coffee Meets Bagel is a good one. Because they only allow you one swipe a day. That's true. But what if I just don't want to go digital at all? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I get you. I totally understand that why you don't want to get go digital at all. I really get that. Yeah. I really have started viewing like all these online dating as, as 
something that is like way too easy for everyone. What comes easily will go easily. That's what I really believe. So I feel like for me also, I have to find someone in real life, you know, Mm -hmm. and I have to take my goddamn fucking time with it. And the two of us really have to work towards it. Yeah, like yeah. it's it has to be a tough journey. It's supposed to be a tough journey. I yeah. mean, not like tough, tough lah. Not to say draggy and you're like drained from it. Not that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it take it should take more effort than that. Mm-hmm. You know, finding a person that you're going to what spend the rest of your life with. You think it's gonna be as easy as swiping right on someone? No, it's not. Yeah. All these things, everything should take work. Everything good should require effort and work. Yeah. Actually, what you said is so true, you know, what is what comes easy will go easy. That's why disposability culture is on the rise. Lesbians are just like, I'm in a relationship, but I'll still keep the apps. The apps are always going to be there. My match is always still going to be there, you mm. know. Like, doesn't matter, like, after breakup, like, it's so easy. Like, yeah, find a new, find a new girl and bumble. Mm. And that is the fucking annoying thing, like, disposability culture. We fucking hate it. And it runs so deep in the community, you know, like... It does. You see it everywhere. You see it everywhere around you. You see it with everyone you know. And Mm -hmm. it's really sad to see lah, because it's like, these are people you also care about. And and you see them treating other people like that, treating themselves like that, you know, and not not seeing this about themselves. And then, for me, right, when I think about that, then I start to think about like, ah, fuck, I'm fuck lah. I'm not going to go on the ass. I'm not going to date anyone, you know? Yeah. It's just very tiring to think about. You know, like, yeah, that's why... The thing is, like, when I think about it now, right, oh, everyone is on the fucking apps. I don't want to be with a partner who's still on the fucking apps. It's... I'm so sorry, but it's childish behavior. No shade to anyone who's on the apps. Like, that's your decision. But I feel like what I want for myself, I don't want a partner who's always going to be having those damn apps like a fucking crutch. It's disgusting. It's disgusting that you cannot keep your mind off dating for even a fucking second, like, or, like not want to be a surveillance to like who is on the game, who is in the field playing and all that shit. It's, and I think that's the whole issue, you know? And I feel like that's why I feel like it's even more impossible for me to date anyone because like everyone uses the apps like a fucking crutch. Yeah. It's like they cannot live without the fucking apps. They cannot live without wanting to see who's on the apps, who they can swipe on, who's going to be around. Mm. Like, do you not trust your intuition that much? Like, do you not have like that much self-esteem? Like, that's just how I feel about this app culture. Mm. And you know, the thing is, like, it was so hard for me to, like, look at it in a bad light because it was always used as something like, oh, gay people want to find community. Mm. Gay people want to find more friends. I just want to be on the apps for more friends. By the way, these stories are not personal at all. Like, I never experienced being with someone who's, like, chronically on the apps. But what I'm trying to say is that what I've noticed in friends, like, peers, like, people on the apps who I've talked to in the past, this has, this has just been the experience. Like... They cannot let go of the damn apps. It's a drug. I'm so sorry, but like, it really is like not in a healthy way at all. It's a drug. Yeah. (coughs) And it's not about finding community anymore. Like, fuck you and your community. Why are you doing fucking the whole community up? Yeah. 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 You know, here's the thing lah. Like, we, Faye and I went to a workshop the other day, by the way. It was like a workshop with queer people, LBQ people, and we had like, uh, conversations around like issues that uh, people that experience and because there's like um, people from different demographics there so it was the goal was for all of us to kind of like hear each other's stories and discuss issues that maybe we don't know about as well contribute to them and try to understand different people from different demographics better lah. Mm-hmm. and I feel like that was the one place where I finally was like oh my god people are not here to court anyone yeah. The, the thing is that like because we're always like okay either at events or meeting up with uh, friends or whether it's from the apps or whatever everybody is th- there's an energy to it you know the energy that is being given in those situations are I would say not I would say a bit more shallow for events I, I'm okay I understand that you know because events they're here to everybody's just there to have fun you're not there to talk about oppression nah, and that's fine but the overall energy that I get from a lot of people there is also like oh my god like like you know looking at eye candy and everything also right that's, that's the energy that I get so over there that's, that's the first time I was like oh my god I'm in a place full of queer people where Majority of the people are not looking to date anyone in there. They're actually looking to actually have discussions on important issues and finding ways to contribute to the community. Yeah, yeah. You know? 
and I, I felt like, oh my god, I actually really like this energy, you know, that, that the focus is not on dating, the focus is not on courting someone, the focus is not on, you know, looking somebody up and down and sexualizing them, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I like the energy a lot more, you know, in comparison to on the apps, everybody's just there to like, I can be in, and just swipe right, swipe right, swipe right, swipe right, swipe left, uh, it's, it's just, yeah. It feels good to be looked at as a human being. For once. Yeah. And that's what it felt at the time. Yeah. Like we just, we were there, at least the two of us, I can say confidently, we were there in the headspace of wanting to connect with people in a sense where we want to learn from them. Mm. We want to connect with them genuinely and we wanted to just, I don't know, like learn about each other yeah. and not in a way where there's a goal at the end where it's to date the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Jesus, not everything is about fucking dating. Yeah, yeah. We talk yeah. a lot about dating, but like, it's really because we are sick of like yeah, we're sick the of culture around dating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think of... that yeah, even though not everything's about dating and we do talk a lot about lesbian dating, I also think it's because like it's just that we are for Mila at least. I'm just really hoping that the dating culture in the local queer community it, it gets better. You know, it's a better experience for everyone. I hope so too. Because like I mean, I think everything is like very, very surrounding dating. Everything is like very like surrounding that topic. But there's a lot of issues within there that stems from things that are outside, like your own, your insecurities, yourself, everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just hope that like <laughs> the more we talk about all of this shit, the better the experience is for everyone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the other common trope is just this whole like jealousy and controlling thing, right? Which is a very common thing also, jealousy and controlling partners. I don't think it's specifically sapphic. I think this happens in like a lot of hetero relationships as well. Yeah. But I think in terms of sapphic wise, actually the thing is I don't think sapphics really have like jealousy or controlling in the hetero sense. It's more like, oh we're chill about like uh no labels and all that stuff. And then afterwards not communicate actually like what your needs are, because you're ashamed that you don't want your partner to see other people and like all that. I think I think that a lot of suffix do get jealous, but their ego is too big to show it. Real. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, uh, I want to say something whereby like, okay, I, I'm, I was never a jealous person. I was never a jealous person until you know what happened. Yes. That happened, then I started becoming a jealous person. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know why you know, I don't know why all this jealousy, I mean, obviously, generically, jealousy stems from insecurity la, that, mm -hmm. that, or distrust in your partner. Yeah, yeah. I know, in general, it stems from that. Um, you know, actually, one thing you said is so true, you know, like, for me, right, okay, I think I've only been jealous, like, once or twice, but I've never been jealous, and it's usually because it's triggered by my partner. Mm. It's not because I've been jealous. Yeah. Because yeah. usually in my mindset, like when I go into like a relationship or something, I'm obsessed with my partner, they're obsessed with me, that's how it is. Mm, correct. Until they start bringing out some shit and then they start doing shit and that's when I'm like, why is there some shady shit going on? And yeah, that's yeah. when I start feeling insecure. Yeah. So yeah. usually, right, like whoever the partner <coughs> who is like jealous mm. are, also this is a red flag for me moving on. If a partner keeps talking about jealousy, like it's cute at first, but you're like, what the fuck later on? I don't think it was ever cute. <laughs> no, at first in the beginning because I don't know like uh, to what extent can they go. Mm. Like I thought they're just like saying it casually until it became a codependent thing and they start like doing things to actually provoke action from you. Uh. I know this sounds so specific but actually it's more common than you think. <laughs> but like, yeah, like I think like yeah, it, it usually stems from like the energy of the person who is yeah. feeling it. Like they're just imagining things that are not there and then suddenly like they do shit to make you start feeling that way also. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. they cannot deal with their own like self-esteem. Yeah. Again, yeah, yeah. all these issues are because of low self-esteem. Fuck all of you. Like, be so for real right now. Why do we have so many issues out of low self-esteem? I think also It's our job to fix it. You know when <clears throat> when you mention right, that person who's who the jealous person. Actually ah, uh, when you say that ah, uh, I realize it also it's always the jealous person, the person who is initially jealous. Yes. Is the one who makes the ones who are not jealous become jealous. Yes. And I feel like they're doing it out of like, in a sense that like, because 
I can't be the only one feeling this way. Yeah. I can't be the only one feeling this way. So I gotta make you feel that way too. Then they have leverage as well. They want leverage. Yeah. And that's why they in- do things to make the other person who's secure feel jealous as well. Exactly. Pity party 2.0. Pity party 2.0. Yeah, anyway, okay. is that the end of the episode? That is the end of the episode. If you know any more common red flags in lesbian relationships, it's not like red flags, green flags like we played, but it's more like just a in-depth discussion and analysis of why some common tropes in relationships happen, in mm. sapphic relationships. So yeah. if you guys have more and you'd like us to do an in-depth analysis, which most likely will be because of low self-esteem as well. Yeah, actually, yeah. everything <laughs> starts from low self-esteem though. <laughs> it does Yeah Like honestly everything Like all links back To low self-esteem yes. And it's because We were traumatised as children And we were bullied a lot But also It shouldn't be carried Into adulthood And if it is It's our job to fix it Yes correct so, Yeah That is all for the episode Thank you so much To the TikToker Who suggested this to us This was a very interesting episode For us to discuss mm-hmm. um, But yeah Let us know if you want a part 2 Okay Thank you. Bye Bye I shook my protein shake. I didn't realize the cover wasn't fully. Oh my god, no, I'm so good. The problem is out. It's not.